Good morning. I'm Chef Tony Hedger. I'm from Local Culinary in St. Louis, Missouri. Today we're going to be talking about how to make a beef stew in a slow cooker. Uh, a lot of slow cookers are just like uh, grills where people don't know exactly where their hot spots are or how their, their slow cooker actually works. This was a brand new one for me. Uh, it is a Hamilton Beach that I just purchased uh, about a week or so ago. Um, you'll see that it has a keep warm, low and high uh, temperature range on there. Uh, you should always note in your manufacturer's uh, owner's book how or what the temperature ranges are for your slow cooker. That helps out right from the get-go. Today we're going to be talking about how to make a beef stew in a slow cooker. Um, a lot of us just throw everything together, uh, we're on the go, we throw everything into the slow cooker, boom, we're out the door. Not a good thing to do, especially when you're putting raw meat into a broth, okay? So, not all meats are created equal. I have two portions here. I have a chuck roast, which a lot of us are familiar with pot roast. Um, the chuck comes from the front shoulder of the cow, and of course, we don't know what this is. This is called stew meat, but this could come from anywhere on the animal, if it is indeed cow. Okay, so we're going to actually use this today, and if you use the stew meat, uh, we know that it's going to be definitely a tough piece of meat, so I'm kind of looking for a piece of meat that's got a lot of fat to it. You'll see a lot of connective tissue that's there, subcutaneous fat, that uh, no matter how much you chew it, it's going to get a little bit bigger. Uh, so today we're going to actually trim that up a little bit. Got to take a lot of that fat off. Nobody wants to actually eat the fat in their beef stew. I know I don't. And besides the fact that your beef stew will actually get a film that's on the top of it. Uh, that film, if you don't ladle it off, will actually give a sour taste or a, a, an unpure taste to your, your beef stew. So we're going to come in here, we're going to cut all this meat up here real quick. Um, the difference in beef stews and braises is that um, when we do braising, braising is a large cut of meat. Uh, beef stews, on the other hand, even though it's the same principle, is bite-sized pieces of meat. So we want to make sure that um, our children, our wives, our husbands don't choke on pieces of meat. That looks pretty good. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a couple more pieces there. I'm going to take a bowl. I'm going to put that meat into the bowl and season it. Nothing tastes good unless it's seasoned, believe me. So we're going to kind of control the salt and pepper here a little bit. I like a little bit of extra pepper. And we're going to add a little bit of flour to that. Now what is that flour in there for? That flour is in there for specifically uh, that when you're doing your slow cooking, not only does it facilitate the browning process, but it also um, will actually aid in the thickening process once you get to that point. Okay, now that I've handled meat with those gloves, I'm going to go ahead and take those off. Okay, and we're going to heat up some oil. Get that heated up. Rather high. We want to make sure that we caramelize the outside of the beef uh, to get a nice brown. What that's going to do for you is it's going to lock in the juices. Okay, I'm going to re-glove. It's going to lock in the juices. It's going to allow your meat not only to be um, very flavorful and juicy, but it's also going to keep it from drying out. None of us like uh, extra dry beef stew. We're going to wait for that thing. You're going to see a little wave on top of that oil. Kind of stand back a little bit if you got her on high. And we're going to go ahead and put her in. We should hear a sizzle right off the bat. I got a low sizzle. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to put that out of the way. And I shouldn't be touching that meat any longer. Make sure we come in here and we give it a good stir. In the meantime, while this meat is browning, we're going to go ahead and what I've already done was preheated this slow cooker. This slow cooker is on high. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and reach out to uh, my stock. See, I got a little towel in case that handle's a little bit hot. We're going to put it right into the slow cooker. Now, that 
stock is going to be right about 180 to uh, 200 degrees, just below a boiling point, okay? To that, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to make sure that because I'm using beef stock, it doesn't reduce down and get all gummy on me. I don't like gummy stew, okay? So here we have our stew going. Give it a little toss. If you feel comfortable, you can do that little number. Not in my kitchen. My fiance yells at me for doing that. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dump the raw vegetables in. Just whatever you like. Um, I know a lot of people that will put turnips in the stew, uh, potatoes, parsnips, um, carrots, uh, those types of things. I like just the regular beef stew. I have potatoes. Today I used um, the regular red potatoes. Uh, they seem to hold up a little bit better. Um, just check your starch content of your potatoes. Um, these, the starch content is rather high in some potatoes and the other potatoes are a little bit waxy like Yukon Golds. Okay, so now our, our vegetables are in. Okay, so we're gonna let that temperature come up. I still have that thing on high. We're gonna go ahead and brown these off real quick. Now, the thing about it is, is you wanna make sure that uh, what meat you're using, a lot of times this meat here comes from the round, which is the rear end of the, the animal. It's going to be a lot tougher than what you have here. Uh, the chuck is, while some portions of the chuck are a little bit uh, on the tougher side, a lot of it isn't. A lot of it is very, very tender. Uh, so you may not want to cook this cut of meat as much as you would this cut of meat. Okay, so if you look in there, we have a nice brown going. And I'm going to take it just a little bit longer. The one thing that you have to remember is that your meat is not fully cooked. Get a nice brown going, okay? Now, this oil will make a difference if it's in there. So, the only thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my dirty bowl that I had with my, uh, getting my meat all seasoned, and I'm gonna try to pour off a little bit of that oil. Very good. Now, Coming back to the slow cooker, we're gonna go ahead and spoon it in. Don't do it from the high dive because you don't wanna splash hot liquid all over yourself. If, you look, if you're like me, you get burns all over your, your hands. Give it a good stir. Now, at this point is a good option for you to go ahead and start seasoning this. So, you have seasoning on, your, on the meat, so we have salt and pepper already in there. One thing I also like to do is take a little bit of thyme sprig, and you can use what type, ever types of herbs you like. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in there and also a bay leaf, okay? Now, you're getting ready to go to work. You still got that thing on high. Don't forget you got that thing on high, okay? So, we wanna make sure that we take it down to low, and then you can let this go for a couple hours without ever having to look at it. The only thing that you may want to look is to make sure that it's still liquid. You want to make sure that your vegetables and your meats are covered. If you do that, you'll have a successful, very successful, slow cooking adventure. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little tip. My name is Tony Hedger, and this is how to cook beef stew in a slow cooker. Thank you. Mm -hmm.